Welcome to the awesome electronics workshop. I'm Bree Pettis. I'm Joe Grand. And we get together every once in a while to show you really cool components that you can integrate into your own projects. And because our attention span is so short, each video is only a few minutes long. We're totally smooth and efficient electronics podcasting ninjas. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about LCDs. And GPS. Let's get started with the LCDs. And then GPS. <laughs> What's technical about liquid crystal displays? How does all right, this work? Well, they use liquid crystals and they display things. So that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. You can find these things in all sorts of test equipment. Watches. And even this video camera right here. This is the display that we're using. It's a serial LCD module made by Parallax. That means that we can send serial data to it and it'll all be displayed right there in ASCII characters. And the interface is really easy so you can use this with any of your favorite microprocessors. Which is just what we're going to do now. Right now. The interface to these displays are really pretty easy. There's only three pins you need to worry about. One is the data input from your microprocessor. Then you have power and ground. So all the real magic happens on the actual display itself. Some circuitry here processes your commands and controls the LCD. The wires are all set up in our parallax development board and now we're just going to go ahead and plug it in and we're all set to program. Here's some sample code that we've grabbed from the parallax website and modified for our purposes. The code's actually really simple. We have our initialization routines. We're basically just setting up uh, the LCD and our next step is actually the main loop of the program code where we're sending commands to the LCD terminal and then sending some text that we want actually displayed on the screen. Next we have some cool animation that will actually scroll across the screen and uh, then we flash our backlight and we're done. Now you've seen how easy it is to make LCDs say whatever you want. Let's integrate this with another component. Yeah. GPS! Yeah! yeah! Go! Woo! G is for grand. P is for pettis. And S. S. Hmm. That's a hard one. Operated by the U.S. government, the Global Positioning System is 24 satellites that circle the Earth 24 hours a day, beaming location data to Earth. A GPS receiver like this one can receive the information transmitted from a number of different satellites and then calculate uh, very accurately its position, latitude, longitude, uh, speed, direction, heading, cool stuff like that. By the way, Joe designed this thing. I designed this module to be really easy to use. There's only four pins that you need to hook up. Uh, power, ground, a serial line, and an optional control line. And there's two different modes. One of them just transmits the raw NMEA data, and the other one you can actually send commands to this unit and get specific information back. I've got some wires here hooked up to power and ground, and the SIO, serial input output line, is hooked up to P15, which is one of the pins on the basic stamp. Okay, here we go. Just put this right in here. Ugh and we're ready to program it. All right, we've loaded up the basic stamp with the GPS receiver test application. And we can see all this information that we've received. Uh, here's our position, latitude and longitude, and our altitude. We're 68 feet above sea level. Now let's take both these projects and stick them together. Stick them together. See what happens. What do we have here? Your very own mobile GPS unit. All right, now this thing is all done. This thing is awesome. This is a GPS mobile unit. We're on the go. What, yeah. can you, what can you do with something like this? Geocaching. Geocaching! It's like a treasure hunt for nerds. We printed out some geocache locations from geocaching.com. We think we know where we're going. Let's check it out and see if we can find some buried treasure. One of the clues on this page is that the cache container is a small magnetic container. To me, it sounds like it's stuck to something metal. So we're looking for 37 degrees, 47 minutes, 7.92 seconds. We're close, but we can't find it, so we're decoding the additional hint. Clue, look down, song in Les Miserables. Is that helping us? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> we're not cultured enough to understand that clue. We've revised our position, and we think that it's here. So we've got a, a metallic box that I can't get into. Yes! Yes! Yay. We found it! <laughs> Yay! The way that these things work is you can take something as long as you leave something. Okay. So we're going to take this cool little shrinky dink and leave something special for the next treasure hunter. You can totally do this! We've put together some schematics 
And all of the sample code that we've used on the show is available on the magazine website. Let's put this thing together, go out, and find yourself some booty. Have a great weekend. <laughs> magic fingers, magic fingers, <laughs> magic fingers. <laughs> <laughs>